In this video, we will discuss the sandbox that we are going to use in this training. If you want to get the same sandbox, you can go to jobskillshare.org, click on membership, and all of our membership should give you this access to the sandbox. If you have already have a membership before March 2022, you can request for a single lab uh, if you don't have the lab access. But after March uh, 22nd, if you have light membership plus membership, and premium membership which is the recommended membership you should have this access uh, to the sandbox so to access your sandbox once you register to jobskillshare.org uh, and again this is for people who want to follow everything with us in this training um, then you can go to the practice labs once you uh, finish the checkout you're going to go to the practice lab and here you will see your username and password um, uh, in here so this is where you need to click on this link the username and the password when you put your mouse on top of the password it will show the password and then this is where it will show your membership status so when to log into the pre uh, practice labs you're going to click on this link and then use this username and password to log in now this is a premium access view right here so if you have light or plus membership you will only get access to the the sandbox which is this one so basically what is sandbox uh, and premium labs i just want to quickly go over this so people are not confused the premium labs comes with a full guided documentation and some of the courses we also build uh, videos on top of it so we use it in our own trainings and we create a lot of videos on top of a lab and then it comes with its own guided a documentation which is also a very powerful way to learn things so for example you want to learn about CompTIA plus which is uh, hands-on technical skills then the premium labs comes with documentation and it's very important to know how support works the support will only uh, be provided if you are following a premium lab documentation let's say you're a premium member you know you're looking at this this is a document that this support will provide so JSS does not directly support anything inside practice lab. So you have to go over here into the question mark. And then I will highly recommend you go over the practice lab user guide if you're new because you need to learn how to use these systems that take some time, maybe 10, 15 minutes and go over that and watch these videos. If things are not working correctly inside the documentation, then you should submit a ticket over here. Make sure to follow their suggestions when you write a ticket. Now coming back to the sandbox. Sandbox is an empty solution without any documentation so when it does not have documentation this means it's open and there will be no support provided for open devices for example if i click on introduction and i start this the only support that you're going to get in this is that if these devices are not working some reason let's say for example you're turning this on and nothing is working access is not working then the support will be able to give you support but we will not support anything that you do inside these labs. So you're free to do anything inside these labs, but we highly recommend you follow every single thing from our videos, exactly what we teach in this training. Other than that, you're free to do anything you want, but we will not support anything outside of our videos, whatever we do, steps and everything. If it does not match our steps, we will not be able to give you any support in this regard. So let's understand our sandbox. Our sandbox includes a pre-built domain controller. So if you're new to IT, yes, some of these terms are going to be a little bit of, uh, you know, you just have to kind of listen to it right now and later on you're going to understand it a little more. Uh, so basically, this is a topology. Um, we have one powerful Windows 19 server in this lab and that has a domain controller already running. Now, why is this very important to, to know that why I love these labs? Because you don't have to build Active Directory again and again. Every time you open this lab, an Active Directory is already working and running. When you land a job in IT as an entry-level professional, you will never create Active Directory or those servers or things like that. Most likely, an Active Directory is already there not even most likely probably almost 99.9% .9 of the chances are when somebody hired you for IT job like entry-level support that we're what we're teaching you there's going to be another sysadmin IT engineer or whoever is going to be there to hire you um, they will already set up an active directory and it's going to be running so the users in that company is already a part of this active directory server everything is set up 
but it comes with this standalone server so it gives us capability to just show you how a company create an ad or an active directory environment so next time you don't need to do this you don't need to install this again but visually you can and practically you can do that just so you can learn some things and then you're going to forget about active directory creation like domain controllers and everything because you want to learn help the skills we want to move to those type of skills quickly so for that we have an additional domain uh, server that is connected to this active directory we have a standalone server that we can play around with it for many reasons um, and that we can show you a lot of advanced skills that how people have create things and then when a systems administrator create solutions then you as a help desk this is going to be your machine hd i'm going to call it hd right here okay this is going to be the machine that we are going to use for for your learning help desk learning and then this is a standalone machine that we're going to use for staff we're going to join this machine to uh, active directory right and then you're going to have access to active directory through this machine so there's going to be a lot of things that you're going to learn from this one lab and it's powerful right it gives you a lot of access so my suggestion to you is basically when you're watching this video uh, make sure to just click on this uh, button right here uh, I'm going to show you some basics of how to use this these labs. I'm not going to go into extreme detail because that's why I want you to come over here and then go over the documentation. This could be your uh, homework uh, for you to do this. Um, skip the documentation part of it. If you don't have premium access, then just skip that. So we are going to skip this. You don't need this. You don't need this. Uh, um, this maybe you may need it for a little bit. Uh, I'm going to show you come back to it very quickly. So for now, we don't need anything on the left side because it doesn't have any exercises. So we're going to click on this hide con content panel. We need to. So when I, when you want to uh, do this lab, you're going to click on this little button power all devices. So you need to make sure that when you turn on these devices, this device right here is your domain controller that has to be running for some of these devices to work because this is the Active Directory machine. Uh, th this has Active Directory inside this machine and it has to work first for some of these devices that are part of this Active Directory to make it very, very easy for you. Um, and that's how it's it's going to work. The whole lab is going to turn up just like that. These are real machines, by the way. So these are not simulations. So it takes its own real time. Uh, it's very fast, but it's real things. Um, the best thing about this is that each and every machine is very powerful. If you click on Systems, um, it is using fast um, HD and it's using 4 GB for this machine and every machine will come with 4 GB RAM So you're not gonna have a moment where things are slow. It's th these things are fast So this is why we love this because one it's done through web So this means you can be anywhere in the world with even your own laptops using a good a browser and you can access these labs. so here you see that if you go to the different server so um, that's a lot of, uh, you know, um, resources wise, it's a pretty great thing because you got 4 GB, 4 GB, 4 GB, 4 GB, another 4 GB. And usually in your home computers, this is the biggest problem that a lot of people will come across that they don't have that kind of resources and things are very slow. So let's say a device is having an issue. These little left side, these are little panels where you can turn off the device. You can reboot. When you reboot, it's not going to lose your, uh, you know, your settings. If you reset it's going to lose those type of settings. So as you can see, by pressing the continue or reset the device back to original state, any changes made during this session will be lost. A couple of things to remember, if this device is a part of Windows domain, it is likely that you will receive a domain membership issues, blah, blah, blah. So these are these are the things. If you reset, this means you, wanna, you want to reset the whole machine again. So sometimes a machine can be hung or something is not working, then click on this little refresh icon like this it is going to start reconnecting the machine. Another way to connect the machine again is like this. You click on this little icon on the right side, reconnect, and that is going to connect the machine. Now, one thing you will notice in this, that sometimes you will be logging into this machine and it may ask for a password, then click on this little eye icon. And this is where you will see the password, which is basically this. This is the username and password. Now, another thing about this is that when you click on these machines, it automatically logs you in. If you want to stop that process, you can click on this little key icon auto login. When you click on it, it is going to 
not do that again. So if I try to click on it again and I reconnect, you see I click on this auto log on. And now I see both the username uh, from here. So it's not logging into this administrator automatically. It is giving me option. Now, again, do remember that when you're using this method by connecting, it is using a, it is using a service, remote desktop service, whatever it uses, that screen is not an actual, if you, let's say you you want to look at this machine right in front of your, in front of you, then you would use this console right here. And it is important to know that because sometimes you may do things in the computer and we will come across that which we may need to go back to the console access so if i click on this it is going to show me the original console access of this machine which is like i'm sitting in front of it not remote desktops because when you do remote desktops it could come across issues or access issues so sometimes you may just want to go back to the console if things are not working on the remote desktop now console may be a little bit slower because remember remote desktop services are going through network. This is uh, again is done through some uh, special devices and, and it may be a little slower compared to the remote desktop. So stick to the remote desktop for most of the time. But if things are not working, then you can go back to the console to get back to the machine and do things. Now, if you have taken our fundamental courses at this point, I'm sure you know about the domain and a work group uh, networks. If you don't, I would highly recommend you watch some of our videos on Job Skills Share. Just type Job Skills Share domain versus work group and watch that video. Because you need to understand that the when you go to a company, they're not going to build everything from scratch. Like I mentioned that a company will already have an active directory domain controller running before someone even hire you for entry level jobs. So this is what I'm talking about. This is a domain controller that is controlling some of these machines inside this network. And that's how uh, when you go to a company, when you get hired, some computers are already the I mean, some users are already working in your company. So let's say this is Stacy, Monica, and John laptop, Stacy, Monica and John laptop. So let's say Stacy is working. This is her machine. I'm just going to give you an example. This is Monica and John is just starting right now. So yes, you will need to understand that this is a work group machine. This is not managed anymore, meaning this is a brand new laptop and these two are already there. So if a company is going to hire you, right, you're the help desk, then you need to understand both. You need to understand when you get inside the company, there are immediate things that you need to know because these things are connected to Active Directory and this one is not connected to Active Directory. So you need to understand the skills of how to manage these two and you need to understand the skills of how to manage this brand new uh, machine. So if you are asking this question, let's say, you know what, I don't know anything that kind of basics like I I'm lacking extreme fundamental, then this is where, again, you need to go back to our fundamental courses. So if you if you would have bought our light membership, then you have access to our courses. You should finish part one and part two and then take this training. Then it's going to make a lot more sense to you. But again, I'm going to try my best to do some basics. So even if you don't take these courses, at least you will have some sort of basics, but I'm not going to go into extreme details. Uh, that's just a little warning ahead of the time. So since an Active Directory is already installed in this lab, um, I like to start that part. Like if you ask me, how did they created this domain controller? This systems administrator in this company, which I am the one, right? I'm working with you. Uh, we created this, but I'll say, you know what, John, I want to teach you how I created this domain controller and Active Directory. So in my next video, I'm going to show you how we are going to create an Active Directory in this same lab just so I can show it to you. We are not going to keep that lab. We're just going to show you and then move on to this domain controller again because now you know how things are working. So we are going to use a standalone server in our next lab, this one right here. We're going to convert this into an Active Directory server and then we are going to connect some machines to it. So then you know that, okay, you know what? This DC01 is just like SA01 now. The, uh, basically, uh, this sysadmin showed me how this is done. I don't need to know anything about this anymore. Whenever I come back to this lab, everything will be reset back 
uh, I don't need to create Active Directory again and again and again and again because this one is already running over here so I don't need Active Directory. So in next video we're doing some sort of things just so we can give you some visual examples of how things were created in the first place so you're not confused. Later on you're going to get into more details about the help desk training and that's how we are going to move on to step by step. So you know everything from scratch even if you have not taken our fundamental courses. So in next video we're going to jump into how to create an Active Directory domain controller from this SA01 server. We will talk about the server a little bit as well and what what is a server versus what is a Windows machine in next uh, video. So then we can jump into the domain controller and Active Directory.